you ask for those of us who want to get started in this. I would say the way to get started with this is to is to sit down and figure out your schedule. When, in fact, you can insert a time of prayer, brief prayer. And our Father will do it. If you've got more time, a song. But our Father will do it. Okay. Take somebody like Bill. Bill's got a fairly set schedule each day. He knows it involves some transitions. He's going to spend some time in his car, some time talking to people, and that kind of thing. You can figure out when to do these things. Back when I taught at the community college in Pittsburgh, I just took a lesson from the Muslims. They went out between classes and prayed. Well, I, I simply brought my, my soul with me, and during the ten minutes between each of my classes, I would pray one of the canonical hours. Uh, if you know the Psalms by heart, and that helps a lot, then you're a little freer to do it while you drive. I pastored my pastoral area in Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania and Eastern, Eastern Ohio. My pastoral area was 3,000 square miles. I was teaching full-time, teaching more than full-time. I was teaching up to five semester hours or even more per semester, three hours each as well more than full-time. And I was pastoring two and a half parishes. And the people were spread all out, their hospitals in different counties, and so forth. I would chant the Psalms according to the canonical hours as I was driving from place to place. Now, of course, I've got a very leisured life. I don't have to drive anywhere. I don't have to walk very far to work. I can, I can, I can do it easier. It's, it's much easier now. I, mean, I live the life of Riley now because I've got this soft job. Uh, but I don't have 3,000 square miles that I've got to cover every day. It's always on every day. Uh, doing classes in, in hospitals and, and so forth. Uh, yeah. Here are the here are the, the list of the canonical hours. The first is Mass. That's your morning hour. And I should think you want to make, spend more time with that. That would be the hour which you go through your prayer list, for example. Somebody like Olivia's probably got a prayer list of thousands of people on it because she's so popular and lots of friends. Well, I see them around. I know you do. <laughs> That's your morning. So for some of you, it may, might only be 10 minutes. It might only be 10 minutes. Well, you got the time. You pray a psalm. Maybe. Do your prayer list. One gospel story. You always have a gospel story. Never go a day without the gospel. Not a whole chapter, just a story. In our Father, something like that. If you've got uh, if you've got uh, ten minutes, you can do that. That's your that's that's your, your your big hour in the morning, so to speak. An hour doesn't mean an hour long; it's the hour at which you pray. Corresponding to that in the evening is vespers. Here we do it at 7 o'clock. On Wednesdays and Saturdays. During the week, I try to do vespers sometime around 4 or 4 30. When I'm, you know, I pray, I pray alone. And that won't be something parallel to Matins. That'd be uh, somebody who comes back from work, for example, on the L, may want to pray that one right in the L. I was praying tonight a lot of good night when I came back on the orange line in the airport. The other canonical hours are very, very brief. You probably won't have time for more than an hour father. Your first hour, which is during the morning. Or 
early. Uh, in our family, rather early, we, we took up the, the practice of making our first hour the prayers before breakfast. And our family always recited the Magnificat. And Denise and I still do that to this day. We still, we still pray the Magnificat at, uh, at first hour. You know that is the ninth over. That's your ninth over. My soul doth magnify the Lord, my spirit doth rejoice in God my Savior. Denise and I took up that rather, rather early one. We had always prayed, uh, but when we became Orthodox, we thought, since in the Orthodox Church, the magnification, on the West and the West, the magnification is in Vespers. In the Book of Common Prayer, even Psalms, it's in, it's in Roman Vespers, and so forth. In the, in the East, it tends to be in the morning, so we have a somewhat longer, the equivalent of a song, Our Lady's Canticle. That, but that's one way to do it. Might just be the Our Father. Uh, at the third hour, which is mid morning, that's all you mean by third hour, mid morning, you have uh, what's known as third hour, or tears. T I E R C E. Third hour, or tears. Or a tertia. Again, the same way. Uh, then it, at high noon, the sixth hour. Or for a sexta, or sex. Then mid afternoon, known or for or a nona, the ninth hour. And then before you go to bed at night, way late at night, like right, last thing before you go to bed, comfort. C O M P L I N. Sometimes it's an E after the end, comfort. Those, those are the those, those are the way ordinary Christians did it. Uh, now the monks go loading everything in. The monks have at least three psalms in each one of those and so forth. But that's for the monks. For the monks. You can maintain the canonical hours without doing all of that. Uh, I, I, as I say, I have, I have a lot more leisure now than I had before. Uh, on the other hand, in some ways, I have less time to pray. <laughs> Strangely. Uh, but uh, during those long times when I was driving... I could sing a whole bunch of psalms. You know, we'd nothing to sing 12 psalms at one of those little hours. Just, but you have time to do it. Now I don't have time to do 12 psalms because, well, I've got appointments with the choir mistress and, and things of the sort, or other people that need to see it in the parish, you know. Uh, but just what you, what you can do. Patricia? Well, for some people who have a little more time, Jim and I have found um, you're aware of this probably too, a little book called Manual of the Hours yes, of the Orthodox Church. Put out by the Holy Norbert. I know the book. It's a little about, it's about 10 minutes yeah. at the most for each one of these hours, a little yeah. more structure. Sure. But um, it's been very helpful. If I, don't, if I don't stress that, it's because you'll get the idea that you have to do those. No. no. And you might not have 10 minutes. You simply may not have 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. But you will have time. You will have time to pause and say to your father. In our neighborhood, Father Pat, we have a Roman Catholic church that sounds bells at noon in different hours of the day. Yeah. And so it helps me. So I hear the bell and go, oh, it's noon, so our Lord is crucified. Right. We say a simple prayer, like, sure. thank you for your crucifixion. Sure. But we even have reminded us that community is so grateful. That is what the church bells are for, right? <clears throat> the church bells were to ring in each of those canonical hours. They call everybody to prayer. Christians did this for centuries. Now we think it's strange Muslims do that. They got it from us. They got from us. Uh, I was watching a TV show on CBS a number of years ago. Uh, I cannot remember the name of the man who hosted the show, but his guest was a was a, a very very devout Christian by the name of Houston Smith, whom Jim and I both know. And Houston Smith was explaining his rule of prayer. At five hours a day, he was doing the Muslim too. He has his prayer rug and he sets, sets it down he prays five hundred hours he learned that from Islam Good. he's a methodist he needs to examine the method <laughs> the method consists in keeping the canonical hours okay. John Wesley would roll over in his grave to find out that a methodist is going to Islam to keep what John, what John Wesley did as a Christian 
<laughs> I find this absolutely astounding. But uh, but but I, I'm not. I don't say that by way of, of criticism of, of, of uh, Houston Smith, who is a very devout man and <clears throat> impossible in his life, just impossible in his life. Just, a, just an absolutely lovely, lovely, humble, humble spirit. But uh, why 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 he would go to Islam to get a, a what was originally a Christian practice? It just floors my mind to to think of this. It's, but it's not that hard to do. It's, it's, it's fairly easy to say this is mid morning now, or, or to set it out at mid morning. I had a lady in uh, in uh, my parish back in Butler who uh, was able to get a watch that he had gave a little just one little stroke of a bell every hour, and she would stop and just as soon as the bell went off, stop and say the Jesus prayer during the course of the day. I think how many times she said the Jesus prayer. That would transform your day. You do that. You might have time just to say the Jesus prayer. You might not have time for the Our Father. <laughs> People get kind of busy these days. Um, but when Patricia is folding bulletins, for example, I bet it'd be very easy for Patricia to say the Our Father while she's doing that. I bet it'd be very, very simple to do that. Uh, that those are the sorts of habits you want to cultivate. Now, Hippolytus, he gives you a special theme. You've got the book there, I think, don't you? He gives you a special theme for each of the kind of I found the index in the back of Hapgood that gives a short little explanation of what... Yeah, each, yeah. Hap, Hap, Hapgood will... Okay. Um, I think that's not Hap... Yeah, that's Hapgood. Yes, that's Hapgood. Um, certain, we got some of these canonical hours from the Jews, after all. Uh, prayer at the third hour. Prayer at the third hour. That's the hour when Peter and James went up to the temple to pray at the hour of prayer, the third hour. That's the time when the sacrifice is being offered in the temple. Late afternoon is when the evening sacrifice is being offered in the temple. The Jews prayed at those two times. Uh, you'll notice that uh, uh, our friend Cornelius in chapter 10 of Acts is praying at that hour. Peter is praying at the sixth hour. He's on the, he's on the roof, remember? He's praying while they're fixing the lunch downstairs. And praying, when you pray on an empty stomach, he falls into a trance. I have to me all the time. <laughs> pray on an empty stomach. Except I don't usually have a vision. On the other hand, if I were to have a vision, I have a vision what he saw. He had a vision of food. <laughs> Was it the snakes? So he, he, he slips into a vision, and he, he's, he's got an empty he's, he's, he's hungry, and there's, they're cooking food downstairs. And he sees a vision of things he's not supposed to eat as a Jew. Remember that? He sees a vision of sausages. He sees a vision of ham. He sees a vision of a fried catfish and other things. And he says, take it away, take it away. I'm not a Jew. I'm not allowed to eat this. The Lord says, well, I've got to clean. But no man calls on clean. Eat those catfish. Eat that moment. But, it's, but a special message came to Peter in a vision at noon. Pray, pray at noon. Remember St. Paul's conversion takes place at noon. If you look at closely at the Gospel of Mark, you'll see each of the canonical hours. You'll see every one. First hour is taken before Pontius Pilate. Third hour is crucified. Sixth hour, darkness descends on the whole world. All the whole world. At the ninth hour, uh, he dies. And in Vespers, Hesperos, says the Greek text, at Vespers, take him down from the cross. You know, the, the entire day of the Passion. You'll find some of that in Apollos. Uh, you'll find some of that in Tertullian. Uh, so you've got a lot to think about if, you, if you've got possession. Um, but on the other hand, you're probably teaching music lessons at that time. You just maybe just have a few minutes to pray. Or, Actually, I go to people's homes, and so I and I have the songs on my iPod. Oh, that's great. And so I I, uh, I can listen to them. That, that Jeremiah kid did that. He had the song on his iPod. I, I read that. <laughs> I was pretty sure. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah and the prophets, they all have songs on their iPods. He said, to the ones with the Latins, read from Genesis at the beginning, is that something you were just... I do that every day. Before I start Matins, I read the account of the creation of that day. I, I, do, that, I do that through the entire week. Right before I start Matins, I read the account of the first day, the second day, the third day. But I mean, is it a common rule or is it just... No, no, that's just a... That's just a, that's just a we're special. That's just a, that's something I do. 
You find your own way to do it. Find your own way to do it. But it seems to me, it seems to me, a useful thing to do. Yeah. And one thing I also want to mention was just that I was Orthodox for ten years, and I could count on one hand the number of times I went to Vespers. And it wasn't until I saw Schindler's List. And if you see the movie where they have the bringing in of the Sabbath. I thought to myself, gee, that's, that's so nice. I wish we had something like that. All of a sudden, Dominic, you idiot, you do. I don't know. The time of the evening sacrifice. We use the same psalm at Vespers that was used in the Temple of Jerusalem for the time of the evening sacrifice. You want to sing it for us, Olivia? Because <laughs> you know it by heart. <laughs> Let my prayer arise in thy sight as incense. The lifting up of my hands. Huh? Lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Uh, set a watch over before my mouth and a door around my lips and so forth. You do those two psalms. It's in the Greek text, it's Psalm 40 and 141. I think that's 141 and 142 in the Hebrew text. Use the same psalms. Uh, this is Psalm 5, which we use at first hour. The psalm was used at the, uh, in the temple during the morning sacrifice. Uh, we, we've inherited a great deal of this. Uh, from our from our roots uh, in Israel. Also, liturgically, the Pope's Vespers is actually the first prayer. Yeah. The church of the day there is, there is, the, the church of the day actually starts with Vespers. It was evening and morning one day. Did I answer your question? I think you gave me a funny... Funny, 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 yes, okay. funny yes, thank you. Um, yes, Phil? Uh, any particular English translation of the Psaltery that you recommend for this use, perhaps one not particularly accepted in other contexts. What about the Psalter of the There is a Psalter that comes from, I think, Holy Transfiguration Monastery. It is online in several places yeah. as well. It's, that, that translation is made from the Septuagint. I don't mind on that. I, I, don't know, I don't know the Psalms in English. If I, were to, if, I, if I were to learn in English, I would learn something like the Douay Reims version or the King James version. Uh, I don't like I don't like these new Rolling Stones translations of the Bible. I love the, I love the, the, the translations without dignity and, and so forth. I, I, when I talk to God, I want to at least be as respectful as when I talk to my cat. <laughs> <laughs> and I would I wouldn't talk to a cat with some of the translations. Uh, uh, but I I uh, I don't pray much in English, so I'm not I'm not really sure about this. 